was born in the continent of Africa. I remember seeing my mother in the warm morning sunshine. I loved to play in the tall grass. I remember discovering my front tooth was loose. Have you ever had a wiggly tooth? That's how I know I was about seven years old when my life in Africa suddenly changed in a terrifying way. Kidnapped, stolen from my family. Several men put me and the other people in a boat. They rowed us to a ship anchored in the distance. When we were on the ship's deck, they tossed me below. Below deck, it was so dark and smelled worse than you could ever, ever imagine. There were about 90 adults chained so they could barely move. Many adults were so sad and so sick, they were moaning. We children were terrified too. Then the ship began to move. The next two months were like torture. Many people died and I ran out of tears. To make the horror even worse, the ocean waves were sometimes so rough that the ship rolled. We thought we were going to capsize and drown. My friends, I will sum up slavery in one word, evil. Yes, slavery is horribly wrong, wrong, wrong. After two months in that terrible condition, we began to glide into a harbor. The ship slowed and slowed, and finally there was a heavy thud as it came alongside a dock. Soon men were pulling us up onto the deck of the ship. Even though it was July, we were cold. This was a brand new feeling for us because Africa was warm. I was so cold I couldn't stop shivering. I spotted a piece of carpet and wrapped it around myself for warmth. By this time, I'd developed a terrible cough. Nowadays, I think you would call my cough asthma. I realized I would never see my parents or my tribe again. Yet when I arrived in Boston, the slave dealer said, you're just a refuse slave. There were clip-clopping horses and men with white wigs. A man and a woman came up to me and said words I did not understand. Then they took my hand and led me away from that terrible slave ship. Before we got into their carriage, they stopped and pointed back to the ship, to strange symbols. From then on, they called me Phyllis. Because Mr. and Mrs. Wheatley now owned me, I became Phyllis Wheatley. <coughs> I later learned that Phyllis was the name of that slave ship. Can you imagine being named for something so awful? Mm. That slave trader brought me here to Boston and sold me to the Wheatleys. I soon learned that I was to be Susanna Wheatley's servant. 
That meant I would help her with household chores. My master, John Wheatley, was a wealthy tailor. A tailor makes and sews clothes. The two Wheatley children, Nathaniel and Mary, were twins, and they were 18 years old. Their younger sister had died when she was about my age, so maybe I reminded the family of that little girl. Perhaps that was why I was a special comfort to my kind mistress. Do you think that's why? For whatever reason, Mr. Susanna and I became extremely close. As you can imagine, everything about their home was new to me. I was especially puzzled by those strange symbols. One day, I found a piece of chalk, and I began to write those symbols on a wall. Would you ever write on a wall at your home? Of course not. A toddler might, because they don't know any better. But I had never lived in a house before, so I didn't know any better either. Instead of scolding me, Mr. Susanna marveled that the letters I had written were so neat. Mistress Mary wanted to be a teacher, so she convinced her parents to let her practice on me. What a great gift that was. The Wheatleys were amazed by how fast I learned to speak their language. All this time, who can guess what book Mistress Mary used to teach me English? Yes, the Bible. I read in the Bible in John 14, 6, that Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so I put my whole trust and confidence in God and in God's only son, Jesus Christ, so that someday I would live forever with God and Jesus Christ in heaven. I believe that God's son, Jesus, saved me by setting me free from my sins. Sins are the wrong things that you and I do. So even though I was a slave, in my heart, Jesus has set me free from my sins. Having God's freedom in your heart is the best kind of freedom. I loved reading the Bible again and again because I wanted to know God better and better and live in obedience to His Word. I enjoy reading other books too, including the dictionary. That's where I learned that word, refuse. Refuse means garbage or trash. I was so small and so weak that the slave dealer thought I was worthless and like trash could be thrown away. Am I worthless like trash? In the Bible, does God describe me as trash? No. God made each person in His image. So no human being is ever worthless. That's because God loves each one of us with a love that lasts forever. And realizing this made all the difference in my life. Do you understand God's never ending love for you and how very precious you are to Him? Yes, you. Aw, there you are, look at you. God loves each one of us with a love that lasts forever. Ever. When I was nine, I had read all the books the Wheatleys owned. I went on to borrow books from their friends. I started with English literature and went on to study Latin and geography and astronomy and mathematics. And what was my favorite book of all? Yes, the Bible. One afternoon when I was 10, I was serving lunch to some guests of the Wheatleys. I overheard two of these guests describe a harrowing tale. They were sailing off the New England coast when they were almost shipwrecked in a fierce winter storm. These men described waves as high as mountains. 
I knew exactly what it was like to be terrified in a ship in rough seas. Pictures filled my mind. And using English words, I turned these pictures into a poem. Mind you, I had just learned to write in English. My mistress was so amazed by my poem that she sent it to a newspaper editor. The editor liked it so much that he printed it. That is how I became a published poet when I was just 14 years old. From then on, I loved to write poetry. Can you guess what subject I wrote about most? Well, I often wrote about the terrible sin of slavery, but I had to do it carefully and cleverly or the newspapers would not print my poems. For instance, I sometimes refer to slave masters and slaves as we, and in this way, I show that we are all equal. My favorite topic to write about was the joyous freedom I had found by believing in God's Son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior. So when I was still 14, I wrote two poems to urge people to seek God and believe in His Son, Jesus, as their Savior. I wrote that Jesus came to save us from our sins and that Jesus has more compassion and love than language could ever express. By this time, the American colonists were mad about having to pay taxes to the government of Great Britain. That gave me something else to write about. Sometimes I used Latin words in my poems because that was a style of poetry back then. Mistress Susanna was so excited about my success, she started taking me to some of the fanciest homes in Boston where I would read my poems. Do you remember the name of that awful slave ship that brought me from Africa? The Phyllis. Well, one afternoon I was visiting the home of Mrs. Fitch and her three daughters. Suddenly, as I was reading my poems, Mrs. Fitch gasped. My husband owns that ship. That was the ship that took me from Africa. Yes, her husband was responsible for having me kidnapped and stolen from my family. Have you ever felt left out? Think carefully for a moment. Maybe some classmates didn't want you to sit with them or they said something mean to you. Well, I almost always felt left out. When I would visit the fancy homes to read my poems, everyone would have lunch afterwards. I could not sit with them, however, because I was a slave and my mistress would not allow me to sit with the other slaves. Without complaining, I always sat all by myself at a different smaller table. I felt so alone. I didn't feel left out, however, when I wrote poetry. Then, it didn't matter if I was a slave or if I was free, I was a poet. I feel completely loved when I read the Bible especially where it describes God's infinite love for every single person. The Bible also tells us that God has a special compassion for those of us who are very sad or feel left out or face great problems. It is so comforting to know that because I believe in God's only son, Jesus Christ, that I belong to God forever. With Jesus Christ, I am never left out. Reverend George Whitfield, a famous preacher in Great Britain, spoke of God's great love for each of us. Imagine our excitement when he again traveled across the ocean to the 13 colonies. Huge crowds came to hear Reverend Whitfield preach. I was thrilled by his message of God's tremendous love for me and for each one of you. That great news made me feel like writing poetry. When Reverend Whitfield died, 
I wrote a poem to honor him. In my poem, I wrote that there was such sadness about his death. It almost seemed as if the sun had stopped shining. When my poem was published, it comforted many people in the 13 colonies and in Great Britain. Suddenly, I was famous. People liked my poem so much that Mr. and Mrs. Wheatley decided they wanted to print a book of all my poems. Imagine a book written by a slave. But many people did not believe that a slave could write such beautiful poetry. So we asked 18 men who were leaders of the Massachusetts colony to sign a letter stating that yes, I had written these poems all by myself. Their letter disturbed many slave owners because it proved that we slaves could be extremely intelligent. It also proved that some of us were even geniuses. Best of all, my poems demonstrated that slavery is a terrible, horrible, evil thing. Yet not one printer in Boston was willing to print a book by a slave and a female slave at that. But my mistress would not give up. If no one in Boston would print my poems, then Mistress Susanna would find someone in Great Britain who would. A noble countess in Great Britain loved God, and she really liked my poem about Reverend Whitfield. Mistress Susanna wrote to her, and the countess agreed to help a publisher print my book. Nathaniel was going on a business trip to London, so I accompanied him to Great Britain. In London, I was welcomed as a celebrity. People there called me a genius and a literary phenomenon. I toured the city and saw museums and plays and the Tower of London. Have you ever heard of Dr. Benjamin Franklin? Well, I met him. Because of a new law in Great Britain, I could have obtained my freedom there. Instead, I agreed to return to Boston to be with my mistress. When I returned from Boston, the Wheatleys set me free. Yes, I was free. Susanna Wheatley had become very ill. So even though I was free, I stayed to care for my mistress for many months. I was with her when she died. It is so comforting to know that because Mistress Susanna believed in Jesus, she is now in heaven with God. While I cared for Mistress Susanna, we learned that my book of poems was finally published. I became the first female slave ever to publish a book, and it sold well. The Countess had paid extra so that this book would have my portrait in it. Strangely, the artist drew me with a black necklace. This showed readers I wrote these poems as a slave. Perhaps it helped some people like Dr. Franklin and General Washington start to see that the chains of slavery are evil. We must end slavery. The following year, I wrote a poem honoring General Washington. You see, in 1775, Great Britain's Navy sailed right into Boston Harbor. They took over our city. General Washington arrived and commanded America's army and defended us. Imagine me, a slave, daring to send a poem to a great leader like General Washington. Well, he wrote back. He liked my poem very much. 
He wrote, it is a striking proof of your poetical talents. Why, he called me a genius. General Washington invited me to come visit him at his army headquarters. He wants to meet me, Phyllis Wheatley, in person. Well, General Washington succeeded in chasing Great Britain's soldiers out of Boston. Now he is leading America in what we call the Revolutionary War. Do you think America will win? Will we become an independent country? I'm thankful for my freedom, but it is also frightening because I am on my own. I have such little money and I'm hungry. But I'm trying to earn money by writing another book of poems. I'm going to write a poem about freedom. I hope my story has shown you that in God's eyes, no person is ever worthless like trash. No, not one. God sees each one of you as a priceless treasure and he loves you with a love that lasts forever. Please never forget how much God loves you. Yes, you. Jesus.